Do you have trouble with date logic and extracting parts of a date in your select queries? Maybe you've got a query where you want to show the days of the week, or you want to group your sales data by year and quarter. One way is to add nested functions and complicated SQL logic to your queries, but that can get pretty messy pretty quickly. There is an easier way, and I'll show you what that is, how it works, and how to set it up. But first, you might be wondering, what's the issue? Can't we just extract the information we need from our date field? Yes, we can. Let's see how to do that and what the big problem with this is. I'll show this example in Postgres, but the problem and the solution applies to many SQL vendors. We'll start with this query, which shows customer orders on our fictional bookstore database. You can find the link to the SQL scripts to set up this database for multiple vendors in the description. We can run this query and see our results. Let's say we want to know how many orders we receive on weekends compared to weekdays. Seems like a simple request, right? First, we can use a built-in function to determine the day of the week. The actual function depends on the vendor you use, and in Postgres we can use the date part function. We provide a parameter of DOW, which stands for day of week, and then the date field we want. This function will return a value of 0 for Sunday, 1 for Monday, and so on up until 6 for Saturday. We run this query and see the results. This shows the day of the week for each order. To determine if this is a weekday or a weekend, we need to check this value and show it as a weekend, if the value is 0 or 6. We can do that with a case statement. Our statement can look something like this. We check the date part function, which we've copied from the previous column. If it's 0 or 6, we display the value of 1, otherwise we show 0. We'll call this column is weekend, so it shows 1 for weekend dates. We can run this query and see the results. It shows whether or not each order is on a weekend. What if we wanted to see more information about the order date, such as the quarter it was in, or whether it is on a holiday? We'll need to add more functions to our select clause and more logic. What if we have another query that groups the orders by the quarter or by week or some other property of the date? We'll have to repeat the logic for that query. This can get very messy. That's why we need a solution to this. So what's the solution? We create a special magical table that has this logic. It's not quite as easy as asking Jarvis, but it will help. This table is often called a date lookup table or a calendar table. Let's create one now. I'll show you step by step how to do this on a Postgres database. I've also created SQL scripts to do this for Oracle, SQL Server and MySQL. So if you want those as well as this Postgres script, check out the link in the description. Let's create the table. We'll call our table calendar days. Inside the table, we'll add an ID column which will be our primary key. We could use the date column as a primary key, but this gives us the option to join on the ID and may result in faster performance. It also makes it easier to insert the data, as we'll see later in the video. Next, we add in a column called calendar date, which will store the date value, one for each day. Now let's add a column called calendar year. This column will store the year value of the calendar date value. So if the calendar date is 16th of May, 2024, then this calendar year column will store the value of 2024. This is the key to this concept. We have columns in this table that store different components of the date. Normally, it's best to avoid storing calculated fields in a database table and just calculate them as needed. However, in this example, the problem we are solving is that the calculations are complex and repeated and prone to errors. So we calculate them once, store them, and refer to them in many other queries. Next, we add many more columns to this table and capture other fields we want to know about our date. For example, we may want to know the quarter of the year that the date belongs to, so we have a column for that. I've added a lot of columns here. We've got things like the name of the quarter, the month, the name of the month, the day of the week, and the name of the day. We've got this column called Is Weekend, which stores a 1 if it's a weekend and a 0 if it is not. The same concept is applied to is holiday and is workday. We've also got a holiday description field, which has a short description of what the name of the holiday is if the date is a holiday. That's all for this table. 
we can run the statement and the table is created. Our table needs some data. How do we add this data? There are several ways to do this, but I think the easiest way is to follow these three steps. First, we insert a lot of records with just the ID value, where each row has a new ID value. Next, we update these records by populating the calendar date field, which is the core field in the table. Finally, we update the rest of the columns in the table by using functions on this calendar date field. Let's insert some data. We'll run this statement here. This is specific to Postgres and I'll have methods for the other databases in the link in the description. We insert into the calendar days table, but just the day ID field. We use the generate series function to generate a list of numbers. The first parameter is the starting number, which is one. Next, we need to specify how many rows to insert. Let's say we want to insert dates from the 1st of Jan 2000 to 31st of December 2030. So every date from 2000 to 2030. You can change these values if you want to use a different date range. To do this, we subtract the first date from the second date, which will return the number of days between. We can run this and see that just over 11,000 rows have been inserted. That's step one done. Step two is where we update the calendar date field. So we write an update statement. We'll set the calendar date to a new date. This date is calculated by adding a number of days to a specific date. Our start date in the earlier query was the 1st of Jan 2000. So that's what we want our first row to be. To do this, we have a date value of the day before, which is 31st of December 1999. Then we add an interval of one day to this date, but we multiply that number of days by the day ID. So the first row has a day ID of one, so we add one day to 31st of December 1999. The second row has a day ID of two, so we add two days to 31st of December 1999. This is repeated for every row in the table. We can run this and see that the update is successful. That's step two done. Step three is where we update the rest of the columns in the table using functions of the calendar date field. This is similar to our original query where we calculated this each time. We'll start with an update statement. First, we'll set the calendar year column to the year of the calendar date. We do this using the date part function. Next, we'll set the calendar quarter using the extract function. The functions here are specific to Postgres and I've got this script and the scripts for Oracle, SQL Server and MySQL available at the link in the description. We can follow the same process for other columns, calculating the quarter name, day of the year, day of the week and so on. We can run this query and see that the table is updated. There are a few more update statements to run. This next update statement will update some fields based on fields updated in the previous query. We could have combined them, but I think this is easier because the source columns in the case statements are already in the table. This will update the rows to set the is weekend column and the week of the month column. We run this query and the rows are updated. Now we could stop here and then proceed to the next step where I'll show you how to integrate this with your main query. But if you want to store information about holidays, then here's how you do it. Holidays can be grouped into two different types. The first type is where the holiday is on the same day every year. For example, in the US, Martin Luther King's birthday holiday is always on the third Monday in January. So regardless of the date of that Monday, it's always the third Monday. To record these holidays, we'll write an update statement that looks like this. We set the is holiday field to one. We specify the holiday description so we know what it is. Our WHERE clause will ensure we only set this holiday where the calendar month is 1, which is January, and where the day of the week is 2, which means Monday, and the week of the month is 3, which is the third week. We can run this and see that some rows are updated. We can have similar update statements for other holidays like this. I won't write them all here because they will depend on what kind of holidays you want to store, but that's the concept. The second type of holiday is where the day may change each year. For example, New Year's Day is always on the 1st of January, but if this is a Sunday, then the public holiday is on the Monday. The update statement for this is a little different. First, we have an update statement to set the New Year's Day for Jan 1 if the date is not on a weekend. 
we can run this query and the data is updated. Next, we run this update statement. This sets the holiday to the Monday in situations where the New Year's Day is on a Saturday or Sunday. We can run this and see it is successful. Now that we have our holidays entered, let's set the remaining values to zero. Next, we have a column called Is Workday. A day can be called a workday if it's not a weekend or a public holiday. This can be helpful for calculating business days in your queries. We can use a case statement for this and then run the query. Our data is now updated. Let's see what it looks like. We can see our table here. We have dates starting from 1st of Jan 2000 and a new row for each date. We have a range of other columns that show different components of this date. This is great. How can we use this in our real queries? Here is our original query that shows details about customer orders. To use this magical calendar table, all we need to do is join it to our main query. To do this, we update our select query to add a join to this calendar table, joining on the order date and the calendar date. I'll use a left join because we don't want to exclude records from the main query if they don't have a corresponding date in the calendar table. There shouldn't be any missing because we have 30 years of dates, but we want to be safe. We also want to cast the order date to a date data type when joining. If we don't, we will try to match the full date and time to a simple date in the calendar table and no matches will be found. Now we can access any of the other columns in the calendar table. To show whether a day is a weekday or a weekend, we just add the is weekend field to the select clause from the calendar days query. We can run this and see our results, which includes the is weekend field. Now this query is much simpler than our earlier attempt of adding many more functions to the query. What if we wanted to see a summary of our orders? Let's say we want to see our customer orders grouped by month and quarter, but showing the names and not just the numbers. Rather than writing a query that uses some functions on the order date column, we can join to our calendar table and show these columns. This also allows us to order by a value that makes sense to us, such as the month number, but display the months in a text value such as Jan and Feb instead of 1 and 2. We can run this query and see our results. This is what we expect, and the query is much simpler than using heaps of functions. We only perform our calculations once, and the data is reusable across all of our queries. If you're worried about the performance of a query using a join, we can add indexes to the order date column as it is used in the join, which should improve the lookup and performance. Some interesting things can now be done when you have this calendar table. You can easily find the sales on weekends versus weekdays, sales on holidays, sales in quarters and years, and much more. Once again, if you want the SQL scripts for Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL and Postgres for creating these calendar tables, check out the link in the description. There are all kinds of complex queries you can write in SQL, but sometimes it can be hard to get started. Watch this next video to see how I approach writing a complex query and watch me write the query from start to finish to get the result we need. Thanks for watching.